So there's a very interesting topic that I want to touch upon before we dive into other mathematical concepts, right? This is a question that I've been asked many, many times on how to effectively learn concepts in mathematics, okay? Of course, everyone has their own strategy. Every person who learns mathematics well has their own strategy. What I will describe in this video is a strategy that I employ and I've taught this strategy to multiple people that I've mentored and I've taught and it seems to work fairly well in most of the situations. The first thing you have to understand is when you learn any mathematical concept, let's take a very simple example, right? When you learn numbers as a kid, right? As a young toddler, when you learn simple numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. All this will feel abstract, okay? Because you don't understand what does 1, 2, 3, 4 mean and why the heck are you learning all these concepts? So there are two aspects of mathematics. One is the applied aspect of mathematics. The other is the abstract is the abstract or rigorous or theoretical or the theoretical aspect of mathematics. Both of them are important. Okay, especially if you're a physicist or an engineer or a scientist, the applied aspects are important. Typically, typically scientists or applied scientists as they're called, like physicists, computer scientists, mechanical engineers, right? Like engineers, right? They focus more on the applied aspects of mathematics. While mathematicians, right, like while mathematicians focus more on the abstract and theoretical aspects. Of course, there are some mathematicians who also focus on the applied aspects because they want to build nice tools for scientists and engineers to employ. Okay. Remember, at the end of the day, mathematics is a tool. Mathematics is a beautiful tool that all of us use to solve real world problems. For example, when we learn numbers, right? The applied aspects of numbers, if you think about numbers per se, what are the applied aspects of numbers? To count. As a kid, you might want to count how many students are there in your classroom so that when you want to give them a chocolate, when you want to give one chocolate to each of your students or one toffee bar to each of your, each of your classmates, right? You want to count how many students are there and how many toffee bars do I have to buy, right? Or how many bars of chocolate do I have to buy to distribute to all of my friends, maybe because it's your birthday or maybe it's because uh, you, you had something good that happened to you and you want to give a chocolate to each of your friends. So counting, counting is a very nice application of numbers. But when you are learning numbers, you may not have appreciated the value of numbers for the purpose of counting. But that doesn't mean because because as a kid, probably you use numbers for counting does not necessarily mean that numbers are only useful for counting. There are tons of applications of numbers, right? For example, probably as you grow, you might open a bank account, right? Where you have credits and debits, interest payments, all sorts of things. All of them also employ numbers and properties of numbers inherently, right? So numbers is a foundational concept that is applied at multiple places. But while you're learning mathematics itself, you may only be able to appreciate limited applications of it based on the context. So when you were a small boy or a small girl, you probably only appreciated the application of numbers to counting. But as you grow to a teenager or an adult, when you open a bank account of your own, you also appreciate that, yes, numbers are also used in banking to transact money, right? Similarly, so these are all applied aspects. At any point of time, you may not be able to appreciate all of the aspects of numbers. For example, numbers are also important in cryptography, okay? so. So let me give you a simple example. Whenever you go to any website and you log in, whenever you go to any website and when you log in, you're going to apply some properties of numbers, especially prime numbers, right? Suppose, for example, when you were a kid, probably in your third or fourth grade, you might have learned about prime numbers and the properties of prime numbers, but you never understood why the heck am I learning about prime numbers? Because when you learned about prime numbers, the properties of prime numbers, you learned it from an abstract perspective or a theoretical perspective. That's what mathematicians study. Mathematicians study properties of things irrespective of their applications. So tons of properties about prime numbers have been actually discovered and studied by mathematicians for hundreds and thousands of years. It is only in the last few years, okay, because of the advent of modern computer science, that computer scientists, right, that computer scientists actually took these brilliant properties that prime numbers have and used these prime numbers 
to help you log in securely. So whenever you have a login and a password, the password is encrypted using some of the properties of prime numbers. Okay, so what happens here is mathematicians worry about the rigorous abstract concepts and the properties of these concepts. Probably when somebody was coming up with some of the nice properties of prime numbers, the mathematician may not have ever imagined that it's going to be used uh, to help you log into a website because the concept of a website itself did not exist a few tens of years back, right? Just half a century back, there is no concept of a login because there is no websites to start with. There is no internet to start with 50 years back, right? So mathematicians worry about properties of nature and properties of objects like numbers while applied mathematicians and scientists and engineers worry about how to take some of these theoretical concepts and apply them. Okay, so this is a very important concept because sometimes, like for example, when you learned about prime numbers, you learned all the theoretical properties without being able to appreciate how these are useful. But probably when you're in, let's say, fifth grade, you, you probably learned about what a prime number is. But for a fifth grader, I can't explain advanced concepts in cryptography and explain them how this concept is going to be used in cryptography to help you log in. It's very hard because there's a lot of advanced mathematics and there's a lot of context here. He has to know some foundations of computer science also to be able to appreciate that prime numbers are used here. So broadly speaking, mathematicians, so when you learn mathematics, there are two ways of learning it. The mathematician's way of learning it and the applied scientist's way of learning it. And both of them are important. Okay, so when you learn a concept like prime numbers, Right? Maybe you're not mature enough in your fifth class or fifth grade to appreciate this concept being applied in computer science. Because for that, you need to know other concepts in computer science. But at least know the properties of prime numbers. So for any concept, for almost every concept in mathematics, there are both these ops, there are both these ways of learning. It. There is an applied as way of learning it and there is an abstract and theoretical way of learning it. And both of them are important. You have to know, for example, if you want to be a good computer scientist, right? Or a computer science engineer, you have to know the properties of prime numbers the way a mathematician would describe it. Because only then will you be able to take the properties of prime numbers and apply them to real world problems. Your job as a computer science engineer or a computer scientist is to take these beautiful concepts that mathematicians have studied for centuries and take it and apply it. So when you're learning mathematics, remember that there are two aspects to it. Just the very fact that there are two aspects will help you appreciate what you're learning. Okay, so at any point of time, again, I want to repeat this, you may not be able to learn both these concepts at the same time sometimes. Okay, sometimes you might be able to learn, but sometimes you may not be able to learn. For example, when you learned numbers, you learned what these numbers mean, and you also learned about an application called counting as a kid, right? But for prime numbers, I can tell you the properties of prime numbers to a fifth grade student, but I can't, it's very hard for me to explain the internal computer science and cryptography logic on how these prime numbers are applied I can just state that, yes, these prime numbers are used by computer scientists to help you log in because they'll encrypt your password. But I cannot go into the internals of how this encryption, how cryptographic algorithms work, all of that stuff. So the important thing is when you're learning mathematics, ask yourself, am I learning the abstract way of learning it or I'm doing the applied way? So whenever you're learning something abstractly, remember that these are important properties which other scientists and engineers have found applications to. Your turn will come when you have to learn this based on the context. Okay, as a computer scientist, I learned that prime numbers have these applications. If I were a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer or an electronics engineer or a communications engineer, there may be other applications of prime numbers that I'm not aware of, right? So it is very important to learn the abstract and theoretical concepts, but also try to learn some applied concepts also because this will give you some appreciation of the concept. So whenever I learn mathematics, I try to learn both the abstract and theoretical because this is super important property because without knowing the properties of numbers or prime numbers, I can never imagine applying them to cryptography. So you have to learn both the abstract and theoretical concepts and if possible, learn about applied aspects also. Sometimes you may not be able to learn applied aspects in detail, but that's okay. Just know that yes, prime numbers are used whenever you type a password. That will help you realize that yes, whenever you type a password, Whenever you log in and type a password, you'll say, oh, prime numbers are somewhere used here. Okay, probably I want to study computer science to understand this better. Okay, so that's one. This is one very important aspect of it. The second important aspect of it is when you learn mathematics, you will typically encounter two things. Okay, this is how I learn mathematics. Okay, most mathematics consists of equations. Okay, 
many people focus on these equations. For example, very simple equations like a plus b whole square. Okay. Many people just remember this by heart. Okay. While it is important to remember that a plus b whole square is a square plus b square plus 2ab, try to understand the equation. Try to understand what this equation means. Try to understand what each of these terms mean. Okay, I, I actually tell most of most of my students that equations are like poetry. Okay, mathematics has two very important aspects. Equations help you communicate a great idea in a very short space or very succinctly. Okay, in a very short snippet of a simple equation, you're you're able to explain some phenomenal concept here. Similarly, if you have Pythagoras theorem, right? If you have Pythagoras theorem, this is A, this is B, this is C. You're able to explain, you're able to explain this concept of Pythagoras theorem using a simple equation like this. So equations are like poetry because in English, with poetry, you can explain some brilliant ideas in a very short amount of text. Similarly, equations in mathematics help you communicate some great ideas, some phenomenal ideas they help you communicate using a very short form notation. But when you, when you write an equation, try to ask, what does A here mean? What does B here mean? A is basically this base. B is the height. C is the length of the hypotenuse. Right? And why is there square? Okay, so whenever, why is there plus here? Why not minus? So when you write an equation, try to break that equation down and question every aspect of the equation. And you can easily understand that if you derive the equation yourself. If you derive the equation, why is this true for, uh, why is this true for, right angle triangles. If you know the derivation of this, you have a much better appreciation of the equation itself. But whenever you learn an equation, try to learn the derivation and equally importantly, learn what each of these terms mean and what happens if you change this. Okay, so that's, that's the first part. Equations are like poetry. The second very, very important aspect that many people seem to miss out is try to also learn mathematics using the geometric or the diagrammatic representation. Okay, this is super duper important. A lot of people actually miss this. Okay, that's because of multiple reasons. Probably some teachers, when, when the students were young, they prefer the equations approach and not the geometric and diagrammatic approach. So the geometric and diagrammatic approach, I call it the, the, the art, the art of computer science, or sorry, the art of mathematics. Okay, just like poetry is a way to succinctly explain some beautiful concepts in English, painting. You can think of art or painting in general, right? Painting, right? Is a See, because a geometric or a diagrammatic thing, you're actually, for example, for this diagram, right? I've actually drawn a diagram to explain the same equation here. Look at, this is the equation that I have. This is a corresponding diagram that I have, okay? So learning both the diagrammatic or the geometric representation, this, so this is like the painting. This is like the painting. And this is like the poetry of mathematics, right? So both of them mean the same thing. Look at this. Both of them here are trying to communicate the same idea that C equals to A square plus B square under root. They're trying to communicate the same idea, but one is doing it diagrammatically and the other is doing it in an equation form. So why is geometric or diagrammatic or the artistic interpretation of mathematics, mathematics important? Because we humans are visual creatures. Okay, we humans are visual creatures. Whatever we see visually, because we imagine, we imagine geometrically, we imagine with diagrams. Okay, you ask a small five-year kid to draw the face of a boy. Okay, he will say there are two eyes, one nose and one mouth. Because internally for a five-year boy, right, he is imagining a kid or a face to consist of two eyes, one nose and a mouth. Because internally in his head, he has drawn this diagrammatic representation of what a human face is. So we humans are visual creatures, hence drawing things geometrically or diagrammatically help you appreciate and remember the concept and appreciate the concept better. Okay, this is super duper important, trust me. Okay, so whenever you're learning concepts in mathematics, remember that there are going to be some abstract and theoretical concepts which you will learn enough and which will be used somewhere else. You will not be able to even imagine the number of applications that this abstract concept has. Okay, just like prime numbers, right? Similarly, there will be applied aspects sometimes. Sometimes you learn concepts from an applied standpoint where you have a real world problem, where you will have a real world problem that you want to solve, wherein you're taking some abstract theoretical mathematical concept and employing it to solve the problem. 
Okay. Similarly, when you learn mathematics, try and write the equations down, derive them if you can. Very importantly, more important than derivation also, I would say, is understanding what each of these terms mean and why are they why are these terms like this? Similarly, try and draw diagrams. Okay, please try and draw geometric diagrams or in general diagrams so that your appreciation of the concept is more solid and you also will recall and remember this concept for a longer period of time. So whenever we learn mathematics throughout our courses, we will employ both the applied aspects and the abstract concepts. We'll cover both of them because both of them have their own role. For example, till the time I became a computer science engineer, till the time I studied cryptography in computer science, I never knew prime numbers were this powerful a concept. Okay, so there are a lot of times where we'll just simply learn abstract theoretical concepts, but please remember when you're learning them that there are certainly some applications that people have used these concepts for, especially if you're an engineer or an applied scientist. S similarly, please focus on both equations and geometric and diagrammatic representations when you learn mathematics.